all going to be on the screen. Okay. okay. <laughs> classes in hymnology? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, we can't do a whole semester in an hour this morning, but uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll just hit the highlights. <laughs> it's really an advanced topic. There's a whole lot yeah, to no it. Yeah, <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. No, that's the last slide. Clear up, scroll through. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Forum. It seems a little loud to me, but no, no, it's, not too, it's not too loud. It's not too loud. Okay. All right. Welcome to semester 101 of hymnology. No, just kidding. <laughs> we can't possibly cover that all. Uh, uh, welcome this morning. Um, our topic is hymns old and new. Uh, first of all, thanks to Susan for accompanying our singing this morning. And uh, thanks to Bruce for filling in for George, who's been sick uh, this week. George, I hope you're getting well. <laughs> He's there. He's there. <laughs> Today we'll look at a very small portion of the history of hymnody and then explore our new hymnal supplement. Um, it was a bit tricky to pare it down to, from such a large topic to fit within an hour, uh, so we'll only hit the highlights. So let's start at the beginning. What is a hymn? From the Greek word hymnos, a song of praise, a poetic composition in measured rhythm having a sacred theme set to music. A poetic composition in measured rhythm having a sacred theme set to music. The ancient church made generous use of singing, continuing the practice of the synagogue and following the example set by Christ. From Matthew 26, verse 30, when they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. I always read that as when they had sung a hymn, but the hymn is uh, more important at this point. Um, Psalms 113 through 118 are psalms of praise called the Egyptian Hallel. 
They were chanted in the temple when the Passover lambs were being slain. They were also chanted verse by verse with the people responding by repeating the verses or intoning alleluias. This was probably the hymn that Jesus and his disciples sang at the conclusion of the Passover supper. Some of these psalms, Hallel psalms. Initially, the book of Psalms provided the hymns used by Christian worshipers. New Testament canticles like the Magnificat and Nunc Dimittis were soon added to the repertoire, which was expanded to include, include Pauline hymns based on texts written by Apostle Paul. Yep, that's the next one. Um, Latin hymns, for example, the, the, uh, That Easter Day with Joy Was Bright, uh, Greek hymn texts like Joyous Light of Heavenly Glory began to appear during the second and third centuries, followed by hymns written by Ambrose of Milan, for example, Savior of the Nations Come as a hymn by him and others in the fourth century. Each subsequent century has produced a great number of Christian hymns and hymn writers. A hymn is, comp is comprised of a poem plus a tune, so two completely different artistic entities. One might think that hymn text and tunes would be conceived by the same person and or written at the same time. And while this sometimes occurs more often than not, the older text um, might be married to a newer tune or the opposite, a newer text set to an older tune. The poetic text is normally set into an accent pattern, either iambic, light, strong, light, strong, or trochaic, strong, light, strong, light. There are others that are less common, um, but those are the main ones. The symbols in each, the syllables in each verse of a poem must fit the number of notes in the hymn tune and its accent pattern. So if we look at O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past, um, this is the this is the not, uh, iambic um, meter, uh, an accent and pattern, and the pattern is is eight six eight six. And in your hymnal, if you look down at the bottom of the page of the hymn in the right hand corner, you'll often see numbers eight eight eight, eight seven eight seven, eight six eight six. And so what that means is, um, if we take a look at the tune, one two three four five six seven eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's the eight, six, and then the second line is the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's the metric um, pattern. And this meter is so common that it's called CM, common meter. <laughs> so um, let's sing the first verse of, of Oh God, Our Help in Ages Past and just think about that metric system. <laughs> of all of this information is usually at the bottom of the, of the page of uh, the hymn. So you can see that this text is by Isaac Watts and his date, the music St. Anne is by William Cross, so by two different uh, composers. Two names may be the names of people, places, first lines of the hymns, etc. Um, let's take a look at the next hymn, uh, Love Divine on Love's Excelling. Love Divine, All Love's Excelling, we know that one probably by heart. Um, 
the accent pattern for this hymn is, is trochaic and its met meter is 8787D. The letter D stands for double the length. Um, and again, um, the, the numbers stand for the, the number of syllables um, in, in the hymn. So, love divine all loves excelling. Eight. There's the eight. <laughs> dum, dum, bum, 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 bum. So there's seven. So that's how we, we get that. <clears throat> there are other uh, ex examples of meter in hymns that include long meter. Um, a hymn like All People That on Earth Do Dwell is a long meter. Um, 